all the makes me go impossible because my name is Taffer 16 welcome back to another reaction video and welcome to my fourth reaction to have I got news for you so today we're doing the episode hosted by Brian Blessed which I've been hinting at recently uh this episode is from 2008 I believe 35th series third episode of the 35th series or was it 38th one or the other um uh, for those of you who don't know who Brian Blessed is, I'm sure most of you do, but in case you don't, uh, actor that's been in a number of things, done voice work in Star Wars and Tarzan. I most recently saw him uh, in King Richard as King Richard IV in the first series of Black Adder. He's also done a number of stage work. In fact, he was in the original London production of Cats in 1981. The most impressive thing about him, though, that I found out is that he's 86 years old now, which, like... I've seen recent footage of him. He might use beard dye now, mind you, but he does not look 86 years old. Like, that is insane. Man was born in 1936. How about that? Uh, so again, this is the extended version, about 40 minutes. Let's go ahead and watch it. Can you just come towards me just a little bit? Oh, please. No, no, no. <laughs> I've been goosed ever since I've been... <laughs> Don't touch my ass. <laughs> Oh boy, it's not to be good. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, good evening and welcome to Have I Got News for You. I am Brian Blessed. Now, in the news this week, the polls continue to slide for Gordon Brown. And some Oof. people are saying he's dead and buried. But I think the opposite. I say, Gordon's alive! <laughs> <laughs> also in the news, uh, with his second birthday coming up, Hammy the Hamster dropped several hints that he wants a wheel. <laughs> yeah, get that man a wheel. <laughs> and disaster strikes at an open-air pool in Dorset as the attendant starts hoovering the leaves before the last swimmer. Is out, fuck. Right, calm down. Get the fucking taser, get a taser. The fucking thing was too slow. I'm fucking come. Get a taser. The fucking thing was. Here we go. And disaster strikes at an open air pool in Dorset <laughs> as the attendant starts hoovering the leaves before the last swimmer is out. There it is. What the fuck? On Ian Hislop's team tonight is a Conservative MP who once allowed his Westminster house to be used by John Major. Uh, luckily, Norma never found out. <laughs> Please welcome Alan Duncan, MP. <laughs> And with Paul Merton tonight is a comedian whose best friend once <coughs> told him, if they're not laughing, it's not comedy. <coughs> well, either that, or you're just not speaking loudly enough! <laughs> and welcome, Marcus Brigstar. I may have seen him in something, I'm not sure. Uh, now, in round one, we cover the biggest stories of the week. Uh, Ian and Alan, take a look at this. Um, that's uh, Flash Gordon. Yeah. There he is. Oh, oh Lord Cashpoint. <laughs> yeah, ask him for more. Oh, it's the back rubber. That's one way of putting it. Oh, wow. <laughs> and there's a balloon debate. And they're having a smoochy one. <laughs> I mean, this is Gordon Brown's worst week in politics since last week. <laughs> <laughs> so this week, Brown has been... <laughs> Hello, Let's go, Paul, Carol, this is wonderful. I'm a big fan, I'm a big fan. Rave reviews, rave reviews. <laughs> Shut your face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
it, it says here, extracts from Lord Levy's book were printed mm. in the Sunday papers. Oh. Blair apparently said Brown couldn't beat Cameron. Uh, Alan, any views on that? Well, you know, I was a marvellous Prime Minister, you know, just... <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> who's that? Who's that? <laughs> Uh, what were some of the other revelations ooh, ooh, in the book? Ooh, ooh. I'm going to chin you if you don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> he said that Blair had a lot of massage from Carol Kaplan yep. and, and he had to say, this is getting embarrassing. Mm. And apparently Tony was very red-faced about it. He also <laughs> revealed that Brown thought Mandelson had been spreading rumours that Brown was gay. <gasps> I mean, that's not the Mandelson we all know, is it, Howard? <laughs> <laughs> A comment on that one? I think I might give that one a miss. Oh, right, I'll, I'll, I'll press it. No, 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 Brian, you, Brian. Don't, you don't then let him give it a miss. <laughs> <laughs> what you do is you refer to him I again refer and to say... You, Ian, I refer to you, and Then Ian. you say, but surely it's quite interesting if Peter Mandelson is spreading rumours that Gordon Brown is gay. Isn't, is that not of interest? So, do you, you're supposed to be on my side. <laughs> I gave you that impression. <laughs> <laughs> we let them be nasty to each other, but in the Conservative Party, we all love each other. Right. <laughs> I mean, not like that. Wait a minute. What? I mean. well, a bit like that. I mean, it's a new Liberal Tory party, yeah. isn't it? No, just me. <laughs> I suppose you are the only gay Tory, aren't you? Actually, there are Are you gay? <laughs> 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 Brian, you'd never guess you were an actor. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so this week, Brown has been putting on a brave face. But what might have wiped the smile off his face? It <laughs> might be Mayor Bojo, even as we speak. Bojo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you've got initials like that, you can't use them on their own. <laughs> right, and uh, during the campaign, who did Boris claim was the first member of his team? Oh, uh, Kate, Kate uh, Howie. 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 Is it? Howie. She's that's, a neighbour. That's mm. not another street name for her, is it? <laughs> Coho. Yeah, no, she's... <laughs> <laughs> she is on the Olympic Committee, but I think that's a bit unfair. Um... <laughs> no. What did Brian Paddock say about Kate Hoey? Now, let's have a look. Kate Hoey is my local MP. I worked with her very closely when I was in the police. And, to be honest with you, she's bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how else did Boris attempt to impress voters this week? Oh, let's no. Have a look. Okay. Oh, basketball. <laughs> Progressively closer. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> Very cool. Boris was a prefect at Eton, though, wasn't he? Yes. <laughs> That's why he was no good at the basketball thing, because he's only ever played that game with a third former's head. Yeah. <laughs> It's just a disaster, isn't it? He's going to go off and do something surprising and extraordinary, and people are going to go, oh, no, he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, the Daily Mail helpfully <laughs> provided a London election yeah. Q&A section on Wednesday. Now, the, the questions they address were, how does the London election yeah. work? <laughs> what happens if I vote for the same candidate twice? <laughs> what should I do if I want to get rid of Ken? <laughs> <laughs> if he's to stand any chance of turning things around to win the next election, Gordon Brown has a huge mountain to climb. Pooh, <laughs> lucky bastard. <laughs> Now, this <laughs> week... <laughs> oh, I get terrible wind. <laughs> uh, this week has seen some uh, crucial local elections. At, at one point, the London election was too close to call. But if it goes to a recount, my money's on ZANU-PF. <laughs> Boris Johnson was photographed on a special back Boris campaign bus. 
And of course, at the front of the bus, it bears a reminder, front Boris. <laughs> <laughs> Whether London ends up with Boris or Ken, uh, there will definitely be more police officers on the streets. Uh, Brian Paddock, for a start. <laughs> uh, Paula Marcus, um, here's yours. A Polish shop, or a Polish shop, presumably, a, po a Polish writing, that must be Polish. Uh, we're off, mate. Oh, this country's rubbish. Cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> this is about Polish people leaving England and going back to Poland. Going over there, leaving us jobs. Yeah. <laughs> Those motherfuckers. Taking away the smell of their cooking. Yeah. <laughs> Taking their polski klep with them. That's mm. a lovely word, klep, isn't it? Yes, what's that mean? I've absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> My guess is it's some form of sausage or boiled dumpling. This is the shocking news that immigrants are now emigrating. Now, who said... <laughs> Man, who's, who says so? Uh, the IPPR, which is a, a Labour think tank. God, you are brilliant. IPPR? <laughs> <laughs> so now our plumbers won't be able to speak English anymore? Well, I'm not sure they ever really could, but... Um... <laughs> That was the joke. Yeah, oh, yeah. Could <laughs> <Yeah, I mean, laughs> you give us a verbal <laughs> signal when you were like, away? Bloody hell, my job's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the way you're doing it. I know, I'm doing it. <laughs> I, should never, I, shouldn't be doing, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. <laughs> you know, I was uh, thinking exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing all right. How many marks out of ten? Don't tell me the truth! I don't want the truth! Eight. Eight. Uh, can I just say, darling, you were very brave. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <it's coming> <laughs> Why isn't this as good news as it sounds? What? <laughs> oh, I'll, 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 I'll turn it away. I'm, I'm buggered if I know what it was about. <laughs> away, love. About the uh, Polish people going back to Poland? Yeah, yes, uh, yes. Is it because they haven't finished your conservatory? <laughs> <laughs> Why are all these Poles going home? They think there's too many immigrants here. <laughs> what did Pieter Zepsel say in The Sun this week? I've lost my Zlotti. Oh. <laughs> My favourite thing about Britain is the cooked breakfast. I love watching <laughs> Arsenal on TV and a pint in the pub when I have time. I also enjoy reading The Sun, especially stuff about British politics... <laughs> ..and the economy. They've got a very good eyesight in the polls, aren't they? <laughs> it's not a real person. It's excellent eyesight. They're known for I it. I mean, well, considering they're at it all the time... Uh, just... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's deafness. You get deaf, don't you? Could... Shag too much. Half <laughs> <laughs> past two. Half past two. <laughs> who's, who's been misbehaving with an immigrant, my old son? Lord Laidlaw? Richard Barnbrook, the London mayoral candidate from the BNP. Oh, yes. He was having, yeah. he was having an affair with a nurse from Finland called Anika Tambilempi. It sounds like something from Ikea, doesn't it? <laughs> now, she told the News of the World, Richard sent me photos of his private parts before I'd even met him. It's, I thought this was very odd for a politician. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't been here very long, has she? <laughs> she then found a copy of Hitler's Mein Kampf under his bed and said, if I'd known before that he was a sleazebag, I probably wouldn't have gone anywhere near him. <laughs> so the photo of his knackers weren't a giveaway. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> Absolutely disgrace the way people behave and keep your knackers in your underpants, you dirty bugger. <laughs> <laughs> now, who's been refused entry to Britain this week? Who's been refused entry to Britain this week? Me. <laughs> what some... the fuck's happened to you? You faded since the beginning. <laughs> so sorry. You're doing fuck all at the moment. <laughs> 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 Shall I tell you? Yes. You don't know, do you? Right. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love it with these eggheads when I win. <laughs> you're the chairman, you're not meant to win. I'm not meant to win. You've got the no, I don't get any points. No. <laughs> don't I say that to you? I would rather ruin the quiz since you're reading out the question and <laughs> answer. <laughs> but, but, but 
don't, don't I say, I mean, you may not confer. Did I say that? No, I don't. No, that's no you can say anything you like <laughs> and, and have, I think. <laughs> 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 Okay, give us a clue. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to give you nothing. <laughs> Osama bin Laden's son, Dave. Dave. No. <laughs> Are you in for that? <laughs> <laughs> Are you in? <laughs> no, no, it's not Dave. It's Omar. <laughs> so Omar, he's making eyes at me. <laughs> What's his argument for being let in? That it's not well, his fault who his father is. That's right, you're absolutely spot on. He doesn't think his dad's done anything wrong. You're quite right, Ian. No, I'm not. I, mean, I didn't he, say he... that at all. <laughs> <laughs> He's, I said he, it's not his fault who his father is. I didn't say his father's done nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that would have lined me up in a rather extreme company. Yeah. <laughs> Telly, I can read this. Now, <laughs> this is the news that fewer East European immigrants are coming to Britain, and many of those who did come are now leaving. Uh, many people are now realizing that you can actually make a lot more money by going abroad, like this man. <laughs> the Independent asked the big question <coughs> What if all the Poles went home? Well, they'd have nothing to fly that flag on for a start. <laughs> Meanwhile, a BMP mayoral candidate, Richard Barnbrook, has been cheating on his fiancée with Ooh. a Finnish immigrant he met on the internet. Uh, she told the news of the world, Richard is average in bed. <laughs> I think we'd Somebody all finish. that. I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know I would. But I don't need that pill. I don't need the blue pill. No, <laughs> no, any, any bird How watching do you get out of here? <laughs> How do you get out? <laughs> what about, the, what about the pink pill that says <laughs> tranquilizer? <laughs> <laughs> Horse <laughs> dosage. <laughs> Have you always been shy? <laughs> I, I, I didn't know what was going to happen tonight. I was going to be very serious. I, you know, but there it is. I mean, mm -hmm. I, something happens. I, you know, I, it's this chair. Mm. You see, this is the chair that Anne Whittakam sat on, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And you can see you feel the vibrations going up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I also have to say, Paul, yes. that I was very jealous because you said, because I rather fancied to myself, and I was astonished to hear that you, you said you'd fallen in love with Anne on that programme. Did I? I? You did, you said you loved her. I mean, I just was hoping you might say something like that to me. <laughs> if I said it to Anne Widdicombe, the chances are I'll say it to you as well. How plastered were you? Very unfair. And he says, Ian and Alan, here's Brian. another. Here's another for you, love. Yeah. Dosh. Ah, uh, petrol prices. Fuel tax protest. I've just read that. Grange Mouth Refinery on strike. Cues for petrol. Don't panic. Your <laughs> spokesman for this. What yes. would the Tories do? Um, well, I think I would have interposed myself between them and helped them negotiate. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> strike with it. Undoubtedly. No more final salary pensions? Well, then I've remembered I used to be an oil trader. I'm glad you brought that up. I thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> you worked for that bloke who got put in prison, didn't you? Never ended up in prison. Didn't he? No. No, he ran away first, didn't yes. he? <laughs> <laughs> now, who's happy about the soaring price of oil? Nobody. Oh, come on, BP, in Shell. I'm George Bush? Three million pounds an hour. But it says here that oil companies Shell and BP have made a combined 7.2 billion in three months, which works out at 3.3 uh, million an hour. Well, I mean, who the hell do they think they are? Tesco's? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, every little helped. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't they give me that voiceover instead of him? <laughs> 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 You should record one now, I'm sure they'll I hear it. <laughs> Every little helped. <laughs> <laughs>
Meanwhile, there was a two-day strike at the Grangemouth Oil Refinery in Scotland over workers' pensions. And uh, why did the publication this week of the Sunday Times Rich List not help? Because the man who owns the refinery was oh. in it. He's worth squillions. I'd never heard of him before, had you? The no, but then I'm not front bench spokesman for industry. <laughs> <laughs> And there's really? only one pipeline, which again, I don't think anyone knew. There's all our oil, and there's Goes one little the pipeline for the whole country, mm. and someone's turned it off. You shut down everything. <laughs> Doesn't seem a very good idea, does it? So you want to tell the unions that? Again, I'm not the front bench spokesman. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there really is a petrol crisis when motorists in Scotland start panic buying, with some putting in as much as five pounds worth. <laughs> <laughs> so now, newspapers have been doing their bit to calm motorists with headlines like, Petrol! We're running out! <laughs> Strike! Start fuel shortage here! <laughs> Shots run dry! <laughs> and I'm all right! <laughs> <laughs> the Express has had some fuel saving tips for its readers this week. A car consumes the most petrol when it accelerates. Really? <laughs> no shit. Brilliant. <laughs> According to the law of physics, force equals mass times acceleration. Or, as the Daily Star put it, uh, for their readers, vroom! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get it, your money's worth, because that's my boss Nash from Star Wars. You want to get <laughs> No end to my talents. No. <laughs> Brian? Yes. What do you like when you're drunk? <laughs> The price of petrol has gone up. <laughs> Crikey! And I thought Everest was steep. You tried to climb that once, didn't you? Were you worried about avalanches? No, 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 yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul and Marcus, here's another story of the week. Here we go, my old sons. This is, uh, well, obviously a prison, a prison officer walking around. Uh, that's, my, that's my stereo, that's my telly. <laughs> This is prison cells about how probably one of those stories, and this is the title sequence from Porridge. Um, yeah. This is probably one of those stories about prisoners having it cushy because they've they've got electricity in their cell. You go in, you get a sort of chocolate on your pillow. I think you'll find it's prison slang. <laughs> <laughs> You're quite right, this is the news that prisoners are turning down the chance to escape from jail. But according to the Telegraph, a drug dealer regularly broke into a Yorkshire jail using a ladder to climb the walls and supply inmates with drugs and mobile phones. <clears throat> Yet none of the prisoners chose to leave by the same method. Now, according to the Mail, the dealer also sold women's clothing to a transvestite prisoner. <laughs> I bet he is popular. And prostitutes as well, apparently. Yes, the prostitutes have recently been smuggled into the prison at Sudbury in Derbyshire. You see, that may be the answer to the overcrowding. It may be that they count heads while the prostitutes are in there. <laughs> they should do a second a head count. Yeah. Mm, yeah, well. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, what did inmates at a top security prison liken it to? Usually a hotel, isn't it? Usually a hotel. It's like the camp. holiday camp. I've Jack been to Butlins, though. I can't imagine it's that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he told Jack Straw it was like a holiday camp. Heidi hi. With drugs that cheap, they certainly were. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write this. I didn't write this. <laughs> I didn't want this to describe. Did you do that in the middle of Shakespeare? <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> Pun's gone down badly. I didn't write it. <laughs> Marry, sir, thy well, cock's gone it's too big. I didn't write it. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, a there's a tremendous amount of snobbery about Shakespeare in so many aspects of it. Like when mm. Sir John Gill, who used to talk like that, Sir John Gill, National Theatre, I used to goose him when I was there every day. Go down the corridors and goose the great actor, Sir John Gill. Oh, leave me alone, Brian, I'm a great actor. <laughs> he said to Michael Bryan, you know that Brian, blessed, he's a terrible man, but he's a lovely bit of rough. <laughs> 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 you 
Yes, this is the news that inmates are enjoying such comforts in jail that they are ignoring chances to escape. Now, our prisoners receive a wage for doing work in prison, and the Times featured the range of basic items they can purchase, such as 250 grams of Lynx shower gel. <laughs> Just what every prisoner needs, something to make himself absolutely irresistible. <laughs> It was a very bad taste, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and so to round two, which this week is called A Blessed in Disguise. I'm <laughs> going to disguise myself as a new story, and you have to guess what it is. <laughs> 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 well, were you being a squirrel then? Absolutely right. It's a squirrel. How did you know that? The red squirrels were initially displaced by the grey squirrels. Yeah. Yep. And now, after years of dominance, the grey squirrels are being displaced by black squirrels. And they've gone and attacked the old grey squirrels. And they're taking over. And a lot of people are very worried. <laughs> it's uh, in the squirrel community. These black squirrels going over here, taking the greys nuts. Taking <laughs> um, Would you like to see the photograph accompanying this story in the yes. Sunday Times? <laughs> 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 this is the news that grey squirrels are being overtaken by a new mutant strain, the black squirrel. Uh, the interesting thing about these new squirrels is they're big, bushy, and have no trouble attracting a mate. Like squirrel, like human, I always say. <laughs> Have you been shagged by a squirrel? <laughs> <laughs> really <were> <laughs> uh, yes, and another animal has been in the news this week. What is all the fuss over Pierre the penguin? Oh, he's bald. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Um, <laughs> but he's bald all over, and therefore he's very cold oh. in oh. the Arctic. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He is, oh. and he's been made a special suit oh, yeah, so that he can swim happily in the Arctic... Not is it that, Antarctic? Antarctic, Thank yeah. You. Not that no. happily, though. He's been bullied by the other ones. <laughs> Looking like a twat. <laughs> <laughs> They've made Pierre a wetsuit, and here it is. Oh. Oh. Fantastic. You can go not. surfing now when it's really cold. <laughs> Look at them. All ganging up on him. <laughs> <laughs> on, on his own, see? <laughs> you go and stand over there. <laughs> Freak. <laughs> Here's a blessed in disguise for you, Paul and Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a new contraceptive campaign? <laughs> <laughs> Keep the hell on. It's probably a lollipop lady, isn't it? Uh, I think they've they've mounted cameras on them. Really? Yeah, they reckon they can trap a few extra speeding motorists <laughs> by turning lollipop ladies into a form of speed camera. <laughs> <laughs> and if they flash you, mm. which, they might, which they might, then you definitely know you're going too fast. Mm. Uh, this is the news that the lollipop ladies are being equipped with mini cameras to record cars that fail to stop. That would be road safety taken to a new level, wouldn't it, if Brian were a lollipop lady? <laughs> <laughs> uh, time now for the odd one out round. Is it you, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> Just one between you this week Rick Astley, yes. Negative Equity, Blake Seven, and a poem. <laughs> This the is about 80s? comebacks. They're going to remake Blake Seven. Uh, so that was a show from the 80s. Rick Astley was a very big pop star in the 80s. He had quite a few hits. I think he's made a, a comeback recently. Negative Equity. That's Still going on. In a big way. There's an 80s thing. So it's day. In the 80s and there's the perm as well. So that's right. This is probably when like, the Rickroll started, so huh? I think that like they're all 08? 80s oh, wow. events which are making a comeback except for the perm. So that's the odd one out. Absolutely marvellous. Absolutely brilliant, Ian. I mean, that is sensational. Is that right? I'm Paul. Absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> Are you? Are you? Uh, they're all making an enthusiastic comeback from the 80s, apart from Rick Astley, who is reluctant to do so. Oh, so he was absolutely wrong. 
Did you, did you say that? Did you no, say that? I, I picked the perm as the odd one out, but uh, the did 80s you? was the theme I was after. But of course, Rick Astley refuses to make a comeback, so he's the odd one out. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm in. <laughs> there you go. I, this, I mean, is, this is via the internet. I know this story. I'm not going to get any points now because you've told me. You're Paul not going to get any points. Look, but this is rather like Swampy years yeah. ago when you, we re edit it. And yeah. then, but you deserve it because your knowledge was so sensational. Thank you very much. And I'm very, very partial to you. Are you? In fact, I'm madly in love with you. Yeah. But there we go. <laughs> I better, I, I better um... brace myself. <laughs> <laughs> There's this phenomenon known as Rick Rolling. When you yes. go on YouTube, whatever you type in, you get given Rick Astley's video. So he's become um, an immense overnight viral sensation. And he Much doesn't like want to be. He's retired. He's got a job. When you said Rick Rolling, it's not I anymore. He it was came around. Like cow tipping when he's asleep. <laughs> he came around. Just shove him off his bed. <laughs> tipping. Hmm. Have you never done that? No, cow you? tipping. It's something uh, they do in the West Country to pass mm. the time. Oh, yeah. Just that's true. Um, just wanted to interject. He's really embraced it now. In fact, some of you may have seen this if you don't have YouTube Premium. Uh, recently, YouTube kind of ruined links where if you hover over a link, you can see what the video is. So it kind of ruined Rick Rolling. So what he's done is he's paid for the video to be an ad on YouTube. <laughs> so people can get out and get Rick Rolled all over again just for a fucking ad. <laughs> Just shove him off his bed. <laughs> cow tipping? Hmm. Have you never done that? No, I Cow tipping? It's something uh, they do in the West Country to pass mm. the time. Big in the south. middle of the night, because cows sleep standing up, yeah. you run up to them and push them over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's fucked up. Like Brian, you ever tipped a cow? I have, yes, yes. Have you marvelous. ever been tipped? <laughs> 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 yaks, laugh, laugh. Yaks, yes, 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 yes. I tell you, been twenty years, twenty day, twenty weeks up Mount Everest. When you've been up in the snow and ice, when you see, when you come down to base camp and you see a yak, they look very appealing. <laughs> I, I will press on with something brilliant now. Yeah. I'm sure all the yaks say the same about you. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm being outclassed here. It's terrible. They find them a little bit too hairy, most <laughs> of them. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I was in Blake 7. I played Vargas, the ruler of Cygnus Alpha. Uh, do you want to see me in action? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Well, here we go, here we go. You have to turn the sound down. Do <laughs> you think I would hesitate to kill you? Now take this ship back to Cygnus Alpha. <laughs> no! I was their priest! I shall return to them and <laughs> 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 I like the plimsolls you were wearing. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, yes. Well, I like well, the fact you've never been typecast. <laughs> <laughs> I've never suffered from that. Yes, no, yes, You're going to be in the remake? No, I'm not. No, no, love. I'm not in that, love. No, 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 no. I'm not in that. No, no, no. You're was... calling him love, too. What? What did you say, darling? <laughs> <laughs> you're too tiny. Alan, I think you're lovely. Thank you. I think you're gorgeous. You're my, se you're my second choice after... I'm <laughs> <laughs> making a comeback. It's been put down to shows like Ashes to Ashes. Can you remember any famous perms from the 80s? Kevin Keegan had a big perm, didn't he? That was a yes. very famous one. And we got Keegan so. with a perm tail. Let's have okay. a look. Yes, sir. That was saying 1983. And in 1985, we got Bonnie Tyler oh, yes. with oh, permed gosh. hair. And this is from 1986, Ian and Paul with Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> Darlings. Ian, what happened? You look a bit like that child genius who was the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the antique the antique expert, yes. Yeah. Even yeah. our Harpo Marx's mum. <laughs> <laughs> and Ian, you look like a very startled King Charles Spaniel. <laughs> <laughs> Just a very startled King Charles. <laughs> Execute me! <laughs> why, does, why does King Charles speak like Brian Blessed? They're going to execute me! <laughs> the perm is popular again, and the inventor of the perm was a German called Charles Nessler. He perfected his process in 1906 using a mixture of water and cow urine. Because you're worth it. <laughs>
All right, science then. fiction series Blake 7 is to be revived. According to the Blake 7 website, the program was notorious for its elementary continuity errors. Not in my day. <laughs> 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 Which means at the That's end. A fantastically <laughs> elaborate prop Thank you for very that. Much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I spared no expense with this one. It really is. I mean, it's, you I mean, could it's, be in three hundred. I could. I'm too loud. I was too loud for it. I'd have scared all the Spartans. They were Nancy boys. They were puffs. <laughs> 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 What were you called in Z cars? Fancy Smith. <laughs> Does anyone remember what this programme used to be like? <laughs> no. Right, it's time now for the missing words round, which this week features as its guest publication, Portable Restroom Operator. <laughs> <laughs> It's for fans of toilets everywhere, and let's face it, every toilet needs a fan. <laughs> well, yes. I know mine does. <laughs> so what did you do when you're up Mount Everest? I was actually three quarters away at Mount Everest at one stage, Paul. Yeah. I were in a tight tent at about 26,000 feet, mm. Edelman Adams, David uh, Hoyland and myself, and uh, we were about to go for the summit the next day. Yeah. A terrible, I mean, a four-mile drop, and suddenly David Edelman Adams said, I must have a shit. <laughs> oh, this tent, you know, Christ, I didn't get across. This is two o'clock in the morning, he went out, I said, Christ, tie him on, he'll fall down the face. He got onto the rope, we tied him off, he went over there, had a shit, came back. And we're getting back into the snow's coming in, good. Well, we might as well make a brew, so we might have made a brew of tea, all clamped together, four of us. And suddenly David uh, 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 Hoyland suddenly says to me, there's a terrible smell of shit. <laughs> and I looked and there was a turd on, on Hepperman Adam's shoulder. <laughs> And what he had done was, he had had a shed, uh, the wind had carried up in the air. <laughs> and then, in a low in the weather, come down and land on his shoulder. You know, when I asked the question, I had no idea what the answer was. <laughs> you sit there. <laughs> and that's the glamour of Everest. Yeah. yeah. So, where are, where are we? Uh, so here we go with I'm fast becoming a boar, says what? Uh, Gordon wild Brown. Young pig. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis Hamilton. According oh. to the Daily Star, Lewis Hamilton saves four million pounds a year tax by living in Switzerland. Bet. They say saves, I say avoids. I mean, God, I've been paying tax since I was 14 years of age. How the hell does he get away with that? <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> Soaring noise levels, what? Increase whenever Brian Blessed walks into a room. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the answer is result in <laughs> quest for a quiet life. Now, campaigners, campaigners are seeking to reclaim urban tranquility after a study found that city life is ten times louder now than it was a decade ago. <laughs> Some cities. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what of... <laughs> What Wherever the fucking do? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck are you? <coughs> it's gone. It's gone. Go back, love. with the fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back to the fucking beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck are we, darling? Go back. A bit slower, sweetheart. She's, she, I think she's pissed. <laughs> Next, if placing a portable restroom near a cliff edge, what? Don't. <laughs> Be careful to secure it properly to the ground, something like that. Firmly stake it down. There you go. Mind you, if you suddenly found yourself falling over the edge of a cliff, a portable restroom is one of the few things of any practical use. <laughs> Good point. Next, anger a sausage rolls mum what? Anger a sausage rolls mum downhill. <laughs> <laughs> Is she fined? Arrested? Fine, seventy-five pounds. Oh, yeah. A mother in Hull was fined for littering after she dropped a morsel of sausage roll whilst feeding her toddler. 
According to the sun, the remains of the sausage roll were set upon by pigeons, well, yeah. which were in turn brushed aside by determined John Prescott. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone want to see a potato that looks like John Prescott? I'd love to see a potato that looks like John Prescott. Me too. Oh, here it is, here it is. Wow! <laughs> and finally, a one portable restroom is named what? In a whimsical reference to the famous comedy character. Portillo. <laughs> Spanky. Doesn't he run Formula One? <laughs> So the final scores are Ian and Alan have seven, and Paul <laughs> and Marcus have eleven. Seven, eleven. And I leave you with news that off the coast of Aberdeen, after a ship sinks with a full cargo of Winnelot, one determined salvage expert is first on the scene. Oh. <laughs> wetsuit from the penguin. <laughs> <laughs> Albania accepts its human cloning plan still has some way to go. <laughs> <laughs> and after a gruelling London mayoral election, Boris, Ken and Brian put their differences aside. <laughs> Good night, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> Is there going to be any post credit stuff? Well, you follow that. The only way is to head to Newcastle to see the original Sid the Sexist and meet the real life avid Marion with the co- That's it. I, I hope you enjoyed that. I know I haven't had so much fun since I got frostbite in the Andes. <laughs> I knew I should have worn gloves. <laughs> you should see my cock. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, then. Go on. God. It's fun to watch these special guest episodes where Paul's spirit just breaks more and more as the years go on. <laughs> what are how he's holding on now? Is the show the show's still going now? Ain't it? I don't think it's I don't think it's ended. Wait, let me double check that. Have I damn it, have I gotten or yeah. I, I I I don't think it's ended. No. No, no, it's still going. It, it's still going. Last uh, last series was series 64. Uh, and they last showed an episode uh, on November 4th of last year. Gary Neville was on that episode. <laughs> Richard was actually the host of an episode. Uh, Gary was the host, actually. Richard actually hosted an episode last season. So did Alexander Armstrong and Jack D. How about that? Maybe I should watch some more recent episodes, too. Well, yeah, I wonder... I wonder how just yeah, I wonder how broken Paul is at this point. <laughs> oh man. Well, Brian was perfect for that show. I mean, all he had to do was be himself, you know? I mean it, it seems like he plays a similar role in everything, but it's like always hilarious, you know? Like you can get away with doing a similar thing if you're hilarious. Like people shit on The Rock as an actor because he's the same thing in every movie, but he's not a very good actor. But Brian's hilarious, so I mean, you get away with it. Maybe if The Rock was funnier, which is really f f something to say now, considering how funny he was in the 90s, but maybe if he, you know, I don't know, unveiled, had more personality? Again, that's still a crazy statement. Maybe he's just a better actor. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying to think of which was funnier, that or the Boris Johnson episode. I don't know. It was close. It was close. To be fair, Boris, that the full Boris thing was 20 more minutes. So, I don't know. I'm tempted to say that, but he also got 20 more minutes than Brian did. If Brian had gotten 20 more minutes, maybe it'd be the other way around. I don't know. Uh, but that was my fourth reaction to Have I Got News For You. I've That was the one I was really looking to do. Uh, that and the Bruce Forsyth one. So, I'm open to suggestions. Like I said after the Bruce Forsyth one, I'm open to suggestions. Do you have anything to suggest? Any episodes of this from any season? There's a fucking million of them uh, that you'd like me to see. Let me know in the comments down below. I also don't know what platform this is going to be on. This might be on One Hub for all I know or Daily Motion. I don't know if I can be able to get this one on YouTube, but 
regardless of where it is, let me know in the comments on YouTube uh, what episode I should do next. But that is it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. If you didn't like it, don't. If you want to follow any of my social media links, my Twitch, my streamer, so my second channel for new use, my Twitter. If you want to follow me on my Patreon, if you want to support me on my daily motion, all things are in the video description down below, as well, unless you're on my daily motion, uh, which one it's not, uh, as well as the Twitch files channel on the community Reddit. Thank you to also uh, all of my patrons who are currently named in the video description. If you didn't know, you can be a Patreon me for as well as one dollar one pound. You get extra reaction videos, as well as the radio comments up to date early. Uh, with all that being said, though, my name is Taffrey Steens. My fourth reaction, have I got news for you? And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.